cheating and looking at the notes. I'll just be curious about what you be writing. Uh, let y'all cheat and look at stuff. How's it cheating if I look at your notes, but you allowed to have notes? Because I'm the one that asked the questions. Yeah. I can ask questions too. You can ask all the questions you want. I'm gonna call you a cheater. <laughs> Here. Ah. In case y'all didn't know, I just hit him with a pillow. And in case y'all also didn't know, y'all, there's a voice y'all don't hear. PJ cannot be on the microphone today, so the Ghostbusters brought her back for me. The spirit is in the house once again. You know what PJ normally does at this time? He says, theme music. There you go. Yeah, hold on, fuck that. Give it a little bit more hype than that. Give it a little bit more hype. <laughs> Feel it. Imagine Michael Jackson saying it or something. There you go. Come on. What? <laughs> so motherfucking. No, that's not what I'm no. talking about. Theme music, you just got set more oh hype than that. Can't Nigga, theme music, play that shit. <laughs> nah, fuck that. You gotta do it right. <laughs> Brad, I'm gonna just drink one with time, you. One more time. You do it right, we can start the show. <laughs> Why don't you do it? It's all on you right now. I am not PJ. <laughs> I know. But you're taking a spot today, so come on. Oh my god. One more time. <laughs> theme music. What's going on everybody? I'm Brent. And I'm the spirit. And this is the home video hustle. You're not gonna say it? Hustle motherfucking hustle. I am not PJ. I that. <laughs> you co-host though, you gotta do PJ, co-host. PJ, he shit. misses you. You need to come back. You gotta do co-host shit for me. <laughs> Next thing you know, he always said they be trying to shave my head and make me look like you. Hell no. <laughs> I don't want PJ that much. It's the first week of the Halloween hustle. Ooh. Started early this year. If you don't know, because you weren't around last year for the Halloween hustle. Last year we did October and November because me and PJ love horror movies and we said, fuck it, we'll do it two months. Everybody loved it. We got a lot of our listeners doing that shit. I think Trey Voorhees was one of the people we found doing that or mm-hmm. found us, whatever. So I said, fuck it, let's do three months because I got a lot of horror movies. Mm-hmm. And I've actually watched one a day I've never seen before. You think this is a popular enough movie to be a breast never seen? You think so? I don't know because. I never saw it, so... I've seen the original. I've never seen this one. There's an original? 1970... Alright, let me let me see. Because I've only seen it once, but I'm going to guess 1974. Get your bets ready, I'm probably wrong. No, because after watching this movie, I can understand why you never saw it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I might have to ask you that in a second while you said it. 1977, <laughs> god damn it. Same year as Star Wars, though. Ooh. Alright, why you say that, though? The kind of like theme, the sort of like like the. I mean, obviously it's it's a horror movie. Um, well, I like horror movies. But it's it's like the the undertones to it aren't really your style. Who the undertones? Like the Americana type uh, stuff. Yeah. And there wasn't not a single black person in this bitch. There was not a single. Oh, think about it. Like I like see with these type of movies, PJ says that, and I have to remind you. Would you be Would you do the shit that they're doing in this movie? Depending on how much they pay me. I'm not talking about in real life. Oh. Would you be in this situation? Black people be in a whole bunch of situations they don't get into because white people be putting them in. They could have thrown a black person in there. No. It was no, New Mexico no, no, for crying out loud. They could have had a Hispanic no. person in there. I wouldn't be in this situation. I'm not riding through no deserts. I'm not taking no shortcuts. That's some weird ass motherfucking gas station clerk tell me. There ain't no black people in this movie because black people would not be in this situation. There you is your answer right there. So that doesn't bother me with this movie. I forget what movie it was last time PJ asked that and I said that and he's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we wouldn't even be bothered with this shit But I guess we should tell them what we watched Watch The Hills Have Eyes 2006 remake Hour 47 minutes, unrated version Uh, You already looked at the notes, you cheater Which one guess the IMDb score? Did you look at that? No, I was just looking at what you wrote down Oh, okay, well, guess the IMDb score out of 10 What do you think the general consensus For this movie would be out of 10? 6 Slightly higher 7 No, I mean, you 6 is right, slightly oh. higher because there's points 6.2 
slightly higher. 6.4. Exactly. Ah. 6.4 out of 10. Rotten Tomato score out of 100%. What percentage do you think the critics gave this movie? Mm, 72. Lower. 62. Lower. 53. Lower. 41. Higher. 43. Higher. 47. Higher. 50. Exactly. What the fuck? This is 50% out of 100. It cost $15 million to make. Uh-huh. How much you think it made at the theater? Keep in mind, this movie has a sequel. Too much. <laughs> um, you, said, you said it cost 15? $15 million to make. Uh, 32. Higher. 62. Higher. 82. Lower. 70. Lower. 69. Slightly <laughs> higher. Uh-huh. 69.5. Slightly higher. Very slightly. 70. Nope, you had it almost right the first 69.6. There you go. 69.6 million dollars at the box office. So, that's why it has a sequel. Mm, Directed sure. by Alexandre Aja, starring a bunch of motherfuckers. I don't know, but let's see. Aaron Stanford, Kathleen Quinlan, I know that name. Vanessa Shaw, Ted Levine, I know that name. Robert Joy, Dan Bird, Emil DeRoven, and Billy Drago, I know that name. You know any of those names? Not at all. You ever seen Silence of the Lambs? Nope. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh shit, well, never mind then. Well, would you like to start this movie on? Oh, with where it starts at? Yeah. Uh, they're talking about, uh, it's New Mexico, the desert. Yeah. And they're pretty much talking about how America be using the New Mexican desert as like a place to test off their bombs Nuclear and shit. Nuclear testing ground. Yep. And pretty much it like killed quite a few folk. Killed a bunch of people and mutated a bunch of other people. Yep. And then you got, like, the people who are, like, walking around testing, like, the area for radiation and shit. And, like, pretty much this nigga comes up and is just marking these niggas with an axe. <laughs> this nigga comes up and is just marking these niggas. Yep. Yeah. It's almost like PJ's here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a, mut- a mutant takes a pickaxe to a bunch of these workers and drags their bodies off. And then that leads into the credits. And the credits is as a movie over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's a bunch of bomb foot exp- uh, stock footage of bombs exploding and everything over top of the credits. And then every now and again, it shows pictures of mutants. So it's saying, "Hey, these explosions are making mutants." Mm-hmm. Cut to a gas station out of New Mexico in the middle of nowhere. It's a gas station clerk looking all distraught. Got a bag in front of his door. Says, "I don't want to do this shit no more." But takes it in the house anyway. Opens up the bag. It's a bunch of random shit in there. And then you open up a box and it's somebody's ear in that motherfucker. So that you know, shady shit is going down. Family is introduced. They're going to where? California, they said. Yep. And they're driving an RV and a truck and whatever. Let me see. Let me see. It's, a, it's the dad, the mom, younger brother, younger sister, older sister, her boyfriend, and a baby. That's everybody. It's her husband. Oh, it's her husband. That's right. Mm. Side note: This is a parents' anniversary trip. Yeah. Who the hell takes the, all their damn kids, their grandkid, and their fucking pets on a fucking anniversary trip? I just want to know. Well, they want to involve the whole family. No, nah, fuck that. That's what family vacations are for, not anniversary trips. Well, maybe it's just like, hey, we're going to go to California. Y'all can go over here and then I'm going to go fuck your mother over in this hotel room or so. No. While y'all over on the Rodeo Drive or whatever bullshit people do over there. Fuck that. If you ever invite someone on our anniversary trip, I'm you going alone. You ready for this anniversary trip, baby? Yeah, just waiting on PJ and then get to here. <laughs> PJ, you are not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man, but no. <laughs> waiting on Nick and PJ. None of y'all are invited. <laughs> Brent might not even be invited. Oh, really? <laughs> Save me some money. Hey, I'll be at home watching movies. <laughs> of course. That's right. Uh, what the fuck is happening? The, the fucking gas station person is filling up their car with fluids. And they're asking about how to get to where they're going. Shortcuts and shit. Yeah. But then I think the, the the gas station person gets mad because as they're getting ready to leave, the fucking dog had walked to the gas station. And uh, the older sister had went in there to go get the dog. And she was snooping around. And he looked like he was pissed off about it. So he said, hey, you know what? There's this shortcut. And y'all should go that way. And they're like, all right, cool. And that's basically about to get them fracked out. Mm-hmm. Because they go down that shortcut, fucking spike strip comes out of nowhere, fucks their tires up, and they crash super hard, total the truck. And now they stranded out in the middle of nowhere. So dad is like, all right, fuck this. Get the choppers out. Dad takes the big-ass chopper, gives the other one to the son. But you find out that the dad ain't a big fan of the girlie's husband because she keep basically calling him a pussy. They ain't giving him no gun because he says he's a, uh, what is it? Call him, he says he's a... Uh, he a Democrat. Yeah, he says he's a bleeding heart Democrat. 
He don't like guns. He probably shoot his foot off or something. And so they're like, fuck it. We got to go find help. So the dad is going to go back to the gas station. The husband guy is going to go five miles the other direction until he finds some. They have a group prayer. They split up. And then you see the motherfuckers watching them on binoculars. Mm-hmm. Remember what happened next? The son is chasing after the dog that got oh, loose. Oh, yeah. So one of the dogs runs off. And by the way, they named the, kid, the dogs Beauty and Beast. You know the funny thing? Because he kept saying, Beauty. Beauty that was out in my head I was thinking to myself it'd be hilarious if the other dog was named Beast <laughs> and then actually it was actually fucking named Beast I cracked up in my head so he goes running after the dog eventually finds the dog but the dog been like gutted dead as fuck like straight up slit guts missing just carcass laying out there and kid is not feeling that he fucking runs and fucking falls, falls. off a cliff like a dumbass mm-hmm. cracks should, his head knocks himself out should have broke his fucking back and then uh, this girl like well uh, mutant girl mutant girl like earlier when they're at the gas station you see someone jack his jacket out of the uh, car even though everyone's standing around the car how they did not notice an extra person just running around but um pretty not much, paying attention man you see it's this mutant girl rolls up and she's the one wearing his jacket so that's who jacked his jacket in the beginning she jacked his jacket and she just uh you know being kind of creepy looking over him like damn he fine i have to wait for him to wake up she start slobbing on his knob to wake him up like corn on the cob. Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> also, why she looking at it? It's a little mutant dude eating a eating a leg or some shit. Yeah, it looks like part of the dog. Eating a dog leg and laughing. Mm-hmm. Like, ha ha, I got dog and you ain't got shit. <laughs> Hot dog for real. Cause they out in the desert, you see. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, so yeah, corny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they love it though. <laughs> oh my god. The husband guy. He, Follows the, I think five miles out, he ends up at like a car graveyard. There's a bunch of craters and there's a bunch of the cars down there. So it's a bunch of the other families that ain't got fucked up going down this path. He starts jacking that shit out the car too. Yeah, he just said, fuck it, they don't need this shit no more. All right. He was taking like fishing poles and teddy bears for the kid and all kind of shit. Oh, now it's nighttime. Now the dad is back at the gas station. We'll tell him about the gas station. Yeah, so the pops rolls up on the gas station. He like, pretty much like, dude, do you have a phone we can use, car to use, something? Dude's not answering. So he goes snooping around, of course, you know. So he like stumbles upon the box and finds the ear. So he gets all like creeped out and shit. And he's all like, you know, freaked out looking for the dude. He goes out back to where the outhouse is. And he finds dude sitting in the outhouse. Gas station clerk is in there with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. And he just all tripping like, man, I, t- I told him no. I told him I didn't want to do it. I tried to be good. And then just, blah, blah, blows his fucking head off. All the way off. I like, did appreciate them showing it and all the gore and everything because me and PJ are mad about the Punisher movie when the girl put the gun in the dude's mouth and it cut it cut away before it, sh- it didn't show the head explosion. I was mad about that. Yeah, that was Because nice. she had a good line before it, too. That was a nice cinematic uh Head explosion right there. Well, yeah, Greg Nicotero and Howard Burke are doing the, the CGI effects, so I knew they were going to be pretty good. I don't know. Was, uh, I guess we'll get to it later, but I don't know. It seemed, even, it seemed like there was a lot of gore, but at the same time, it don't seem like there was a lot. There was a lot of blood, and I feel like it could have been... I feel like there could have been like more gore. Like There could have been like bringing pieces like all splattered and chunky mm-hmm. and shit, but... I mean, you know, you get what you get. This is what, early 2000s? So. 2006? Yeah. You know. This is the unrated version, so that's that was the most. So if you saw it in the theater, you have even less. Yeah. That's I wonder true. what was really unrated, because it seemed like a lot of stuff in this movie wasn't really that like bad, if that's, that probably sounds crazy. I mean, they probably cut out the rape scene, maybe. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, Maybe. Or maybe like motherfuckers heads getting blown off super hard. Yeah, they probably cut cut away scenes like that, like you know. I had to look that up and see exactly what parts got cut because I'm curious because it don't seem like a lot of it was very extreme, violence wise. Um, I can see what parts they might have cut off, but um, and then pretty much so after he see, after dude shot, shoots his head off, you all of a sudden hear this like creepy ass voice going, "Daddy, daddy." daddy. Yeah. And so, you know, cop, you know, the dude gets scared and he's just like sh- randomly shooting into the darkness. Wasting all that ammunition. Uh huh. Sees the car with the lights on. So he's like, oh, I'm going to run in here in jacket. And like, well, he had d- turned the car, remember? He got out. The lights were already on. Yeah, he, he, he had put the, the keys in there to just try to start it, I think. Then he started hearing the voice. He got out. But then when he got back in, dude yoked him from behind or started slamming his head against the door and shit. No, he was inside the car when they did that. I'm saying he got in the car and then he got back out and then he got back in. He did? 
Yeah, because when he started hearing the voices, he got back out to like investigate, and that's when he started shooting around outside. He didn't he, get in the car when he heard the voices. He was already at the outhouse when he heard it because he stumbled into the shrub. I know he went to the car and tried to start it, and when he turned on the lights of the car, it shined the light onto the outhouse. That's when he seen that oh. dude. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I I give you that one. Uh-huh. Auntie who, like a dumbass, he gets in the damn car, doesn't even check to see if someone's in there, which, I mean... It's a horror movie. You already know someone's going to be in there. Mm-hmm. He gets in there and it's like the dude who's saying daddy and shit slams his head against the front windshield and this mm-hmm. dude is out. Knocked him the fuck out. Did you expect the dad to be the first one to go? Mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of only makes sense, honestly. Get, get rid of the strongest person first. Yeah. Well, because he's just like too confident in his abilities and that cockiness arrogance can like he was a, like a police detective or something so he had the gun and everything so he's and like, they'd yeah. be the most scared niggas because you see they'd be shooting unarmed niggas all the time politicalness and i'm just saying he was have eyes i didn't expect that it is like pj's back in everything <laughs> mm-hmm. see pj ain't going nowhere <laughs> he called me pj I'm a <laughs> oh and i wrote down a note too after the dude shot himself in the head i wrote a note of 42 minutes because i was like damn it's like 42 minutes before like shit really pops off it's a lot of build up and I have to admit I was lightweight starting to get slightly bored before this shit for real too much character build up I say I know a lot of people are like oh man it's just you people with your short attention spans it's like nah mm-hmm. man I, I'm watching a f- fucking slasher horror movie man I don't need all that it's like right. the original movie is an hour and fucking 29 minutes I think because yeah, I remember I, was, I remember I only saw the original ones but it, I remember getting to this shit quick like <laughs> it was like yeah it pops off early how much character buildup do you need? We get it. Republican family, dumbass dad, wants to take a scenic route, gets his family killed. We get it. Mm-hmm. Get to the killing. Pretty much I felt. But after that, dad got beat the fuck up. They take him down to the mines. The son gets found. But he guess he's been laying there all fucking day because now it's nighttime. So he's all fucking paranoid. Everybody wondering what the fuck wrong with him. He's inside. The other dog, he hear it barking. Go outside. That motherfucker gone. And while he's out there looking, boyfriend comes back. Yeah, don't that motherfucker leave. The son leaves, right? He goes looking for the dog again, don't he? I thought that was during the daytime, though. Well, it was during the daytime the first time. I remember, but then the other dog left. And I think he went looking for it after that. Probably something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he left because it was they were all going to bed. Remember, he was sitting in the room all bored and shit. And that's when he heard the dog. He went outside and it was gone. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everybody was, because the mom was sleeping, the sister was sleeping, then the, the husband and wife went into the, the truck and they were sleeping. The dad was is fucked up, so he gone. So the son, the little boy leave, and I think while he's gone, yeah, that's when the mutants come, right? Because they start fucking with him while, because they like touching on the, the younger sister while she's sleeping. Um, something happens because, uh, well, no, what happens is they end up uh, luring everyone outside of the thing because the kid, the he wakes up. set on fire. Yeah, the kid wakes up and he's like, yo, the dog's missing, dad's not back, I'm freaking out. And the, his, like, I guess you say brother-in-law is like, yo, chill, like... I guess we'll look for him or something like, and then all of a sudden you see fire, and Dad is like strapped up Set to this the dad tree. Set on fire, like crucified his ass and put him on fire. Uh huh. Said fuck you. Everyone's running over there. They're trying to extinguish the fire. They run over to the dad. Yeah, um, so they left right there. They left the younger sister there by herself. Uh huh. That's so she got raped by the mutant. Yeah. And I think yeah, one of, yeah, one of the motherfuckers like they got birds in there. One of the motherfuckers bites the head off the bird and is like drinking the blood out of it and all this shit. And the one mutant. This is one thing that pissed me off too, because like I guess there's two mutants. Mm-hmm. One is more deformed than the other. One looks like he's out of the Goonies. The other one just looks like he done got had like a cleft palate or some shit. Mm-hmm. And um, like the Goonie looking mutant, he's over there like trying to rape the girl. And the other fucked up one. He's like, you're not man enough to rape her. you need to be a man to do that. Right. Like, first of all, first of all, let's clear (laughs) up something. If you're raping people, you're not a man. You're a piece of shit who deserves to die. And he does die. By castration. Mm, Well, that's not how he died. That's how you deserve to die. Yeah. I rest my case. There you go. Keep it simple. But yeah, the baby's in there too. And so like, um, they hear a noise going on inside the... uh, RV. So the yeah, sister they heard runs her sister back. screaming finally. So the older sister runs back and she's trying to save her baby and whatnot because the one mutant has the, the Goonie mutant depicted the kid since he can't rape the girl. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm gonna entertain myself with the kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's trying to stop him from raping the kid and uh, well grabbing his, her daughter. And so the one the mutant that was raping her sister stops and he decides he wants to breastfeed off of the 
Oh, yeah, sister. He's, I forgot he started sucking on his older sister, Titty. That's right. So, because she's still lactating because she just had a baby and shit. And so, like, he's breastfeeding off of her. Oh, yeah, and then the mom comes in with a fucking rock. I guess she just try to hit him in the head with the rock. And she gets shot. Gets shot in her fucking stomach. Blasted across the room. Mm-hmm. And then all hell breaks loose. Um, they end up shooting a big sister in the head. Yeah, she stabbed a mutant in the kneecap, and she was just sitting there twisting the motherfucker in there while she was doing that. Your man just blazed her right in the head, right in the side of that motherfucker, like temple. Mm-hmm. I think everyone starts running back to the RV now. They try to dip off. Yeah, they bang out, and then they come back and see the mom shot, the sister shot, and then the baby gone. Yeah, um, and the husband comes back, and like the his wife has like her last breath or whatever. Gasp of air. And then, you know, dad is murked as fuck. They get him off the tree, but he he gone. So the dad dead, the mom dead, the older sister dead, and the baby gone. And at the mute, now is up there with the binoculars watching everything. You find out that the other dog is up there with him, and the dog murks that motherfucker, like, bite, chews his neck and all that shit. But the son is sitting there with the mom after that. She's saying some weird shit, and then she's dead. So now she's fully dead. That's why I forgot she died later. And the dog comes back. So the boyfriend uh, or the husband is like, all right, we need to go figure out a plan because the son is about to go out there and just start chopping he's like no motherfucker that's dumb you need to come up with a plan first so he's like i'm gonna take this dog i'm gonna go investigate uh, i think he walks for a while because it's the fucking daytime now he's like he finds like a little town reminded me of um you ever seen you ever seen any indiana jones movie i've seen clips of them oh shit but the fourth movie there was it's called indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull there's a scene where he actually walks, there's like stumbles onto a nuclear testing ground. And it looks like this. Where it's got the houses with all the fake dummy people around. Mm-hmm. And everybody hated that part of the movie because it's about they're actually about to shoot a bomb down. And he has to figure out a way to escape. He jumps inside a refrigerator that's lead lined. And he shuts the door. And the bomb goes off. And it, like the fucking refrigerator like explodes out of the town. And it flies away. And then it like rolls around somewhere. And he just falls out of it like perfectly. Nothing wrong with him. And everybody hated that shit. I think they, what was the phrase? I think they called it nuking the fridge. You know how, like, they say jumping the shark? You ain't never heard of jumping the shark? Oh, Beside a Geek, if you're listening, I heard there you go. Jumping the gun. Yeah. Oh, this is funny now. I'm so happy you said this. Because on Beside a Geek show, he was mad because his wife didn't know what the fuck jumping the shark meant. And now, my girlfriend also doesn't know what jumping the shark is. Basically, it stems from the ha- there's a show called Happy Days. And, well, not that, no. <laughs> but there's an episode where like the lead character finds that he he um they're at like a beach and he jumps over a shark. And a lot of people say like when the, when a TV show is on so long that it does something real stupid to make the rest of the show like just whatever. Mm-hmm. They call it jumping the shark. Oh. <laughs> at the moment, a movie or TV show where it's just like, all right, this shit is like ridiculous now. Mm. And that's what that, that stems from that because after that it's like this motherfuckers jumping over sharks and shit. Right. How the hell did I come to that? Oh, because I was talking about nuking the fridge. That's right, yeah, because after Indiana Jones, they, people, some people just start saying nuking the fridge. Now it's the new jump to shark thing. Pop culture for that ad. But like I said, he finds the town. He also finds the baby. And he's trying to do some splinter cell shit. He's trying to sneak and grab the baby. A lot of little mama mutants in there watching fucking divorce court of all things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit. I'm about to go on a little rant now. Because Divorce Court comes on the CW channel. And I can't get that fucking channel to come in at all on my antenna. But these motherfuckers in the New Mexico desert get it to come in. Not all the way. They get that shit to come in, though. A lot of times I try to get that shit to come in, it just is black. So how the fuck do y'all get the CW there and I can't even get that shit here in the city? It's bullshit. Fuck you. Maybe it's radiation. Fuck it. (laughs) And so he's sneaking around trying to grab his baby. He sneaks past her, grabs the baby, gets down the hallway. You think he's clear, right? No, I didn't think he was clear. Nope. <laughs> all headed bitch comes and whacks him. Yeah, the mama mutant or whatever. Because it's like, you know it's coming because it's super. Like, that's the thing. Like I said, shit in this movie is just drawing the fuck out. It's like, you know it's coming. But it's like they try to stretch it out to maybe, I don't know, maybe try to trick you or something. Oh, maybe it's not going to happen, but then it happens. It's like, yeah, I knew that was coming. You just wasted like 30 seconds of my time. Mm hmm. It's like, look, get on with it, man. Building suspense, I guess. Building the tension. It's like, no, I know what's going to happen, bro. Horror movies get made every day, B. I know what the fuck is coming. <laughs> so, yeah, the husband dude, he wakes up in a box. Like a freezer or something. I don't know what the fuck it was. There's a bunch of body parts in there. Well, no, it's funny because when they show him, you can clearly see, like, a body or a head and shit next to him. But then he lights a uh, match, and then, like, I guess it lit it up, and then he starts screaming. It's like, bro, I seen that shit. You ain't have to light no fucking match. Right. I already saw that shit. 
It's not dark where you. It's at. not dark at all. <laughs> like I clearly saw that shit. Like the lid is not like a like a full solid lid. Like it's a, like a plexiglass. It's a <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's foggy or something because he starts wiping it off and shit. Yeah. It's just dirty. Mm-hmm. So you can see in that bitch. Mm-hmm. That just made me laugh. I was like, bro, did you really not see that? Like he was right next to it. They do a lot of dumb stuff in this movie. <laughs> yes, they do. But he breaks out the motherfucker because this whole raggedy ass piece of shit. He's like banging up on it and it's got this little bitch ass lock on it mm-hmm. breaks that shit real easily and he gets up out of there so in a way would you say that this scene was pointless pretty much okay there's a lot of those I'm just I, I haven't pointed them out until now but there's a couple of scenes where it's like just adding to that fucking runtime. it seemed like yeah unnecessarily <laughs> cause like once he does that yeah he just goes right back into the fucking cause it shows the dog he locked the dog in the car cause it was making noise almost got him caught but the dog like tunneled out the bottom of the motherfucker but then once he wakes up out of the box, he just walks into the house again, or a different one, I guess, and there's a fucking mutant in there singing, what is that, not the not the national anthem, what is that, the yeah. Star Spangled Banner song, or whatever it is? Is that it what is the fuck? national anthem. Is that the national anthem you're singing? Shows how much I know about this. Oh, that is a national anthem. Yeah, it shows how much I know, then. <laughs> I don't sing it very often. Brent's not American. When you, went to, when you went to school, did they make you sing that every morning in school? I protested that shit. I, well, we no. didn't do the song. They did the Pledge of Allegiance. You just had to do, sit there with your hand up your sat, heart. No, I sat down. I would not stand for that oh, shit. Oh, you were doing it before Kaepernick, huh? Mm-hmm. I did that once at a football game, too, in a small-ass town that I was living in, in St. Mary's, Ohio. And I thought the lynch mob was going to come after me, but I was like, fuck y'all, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was because I remember by middle school, they stopped doing it. But I remember elementary school, they used to do it every morning when I was in school. In small towns, they do it. Uh, middle school, elementary, high school. I'm sure they probably do it in college, shit. <laughs> I was the one. The one thing with the Afrocentric, we did. They uh, did the Black National Anthem every morning. I'm down for that one. I stand for that one. Ain't the, uh, lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven. heaven. Yeah, yes, I know that one. With the harmonies of liberty. <laughs> That's cool. Afrocentric. They had their own theme song too, so they would play that one. And they would play like the I forget how it goes. Like, but it was a. Uh, it's the Afrocentric school. Fuck, where the something, something, something. I don't remember no movie we've been to. Nah, it's where the grades are the best or some shit like that. Oh, I something don't like that. That's the thing. It's so, it's I might have came after your time for real. Because I went in like the early 2000s. I was there for like elementary and kindergarten. Like early elementary and kindergarten. And yeah. like I remember we would do the... Um, Black National Anthem. I think we did the Pledge of Allegiance too. I did both. Um, I don't think we. I don't think I. I think we just. I don't think we did the regular one. I don't remember anyway. I remember the principal would talk about the um, seven principles. I know, like we would name those off every oh, yeah. day. Or whatever. Yeah, they did. Did they do the, We when we went there, they had the was it the libation ceremony where they would like they would say something and pour water into the plant and yeah. shit. Yeah, I remember that. And then um, our and then we also like would have a moment of silence for the. Uh, Ancestors and yeah, we did that too. Yeah. yeah, for the ancestors and whatnot. The Ma'at and what do you say, Ma'at and Kuji Chagalia and Imani. Imani and there's one. I, oh fuck, I don't remember no more. It's been too long. There is seven of them. It's yeah. the principles of Kwanzaa. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we used to go through all that every morning. But it's the points where I would <laughs> I would come in late a lot of times, so I would always miss it because waking up early is hard. So the seven principles of Kwanzaa. We're going to go through them real quick. I mean, it's off, top, off topic. Yeah, that's what we do here. But it's black history. Y'all need to know this. Because, right. I mean, we spend 365 days of the year learning about white history. Even our month, we still learn around about white history. So, I mean, y'all can y'all can take five minutes or one hour. <laughs> so, pretty much Kwanzaa is an African-American. Um, it's a holiday. It well, It's not African. It's African-American. Mm-hmm. Created by an African-American mm-hmm. person. Um, but it pretty much ties in African qualities. And it's um, about seven principles that we think are the foundation of our society and of our, our culture. And, um, yeah, Kwanzaa is it's kind of like uh, Black Christmas mm-hmm. to, in a short, shortened, pretty much down version of it. But the first one is Umoja, which is unity. Mm-hmm. There is Kujichagalia, mm-hmm. which is self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative, cooperative economics. Oh. Uh, Nia, purpose. Kumba, creativity. And Imani, faith. There was something else I remember. It was, it was like Naguzo Saba or something. What was that? You know what I'm talking about? 
fuck. Uh, damn, I wish PJ was here. He would probably know for sure. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tripping. Ah, oh, it is okay. It is a real thing. I just okay. Oh, that's just another thing. That's that's Kwanzaa. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is Kwanzaa or Naguzo side. Okay, I was like, I knew there was something else. BFF for, for all you black folk out there talking about we don't celebrate Kwanzaa because we not African. It's African American. You black folk. It's our holiday. Y'all should probably celebrate. Y'all can praise white Jesus on Christmas. Y'all can at least celebrate your African Americanness. There you on go. Kwanzaa. And every day. And Kwanzaa ain't the only one. Y'all don't celebrate Juneteenth or nothing. Like, and y'all really don't do shit for Black History Month. Like, we, black folk, we I mean, need to get together. Started. <laughs> I mean, we need to get together. Y'all can celebrate all these little... I mean, y'all celebrate Washington's birthday and whatnot. And that nigga has slaves, but y'all can't <laughs> even sit there and celebrate Juneteenth? Okay. I think, I think a lot of people don't know what Juneteenth is, honestly. Do okay. I need to explain that to them? I think PJ's done it before, but you can do it if you want to. Juneteenth is a holiday pretty much celebrating when African Americans in this country were actually freed from slavery. And I know you're saying, oh, like it happened before that. No, 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 no. Because even though we were technically free with the, um, what is Abe Lincoln say? The Emancipation Proclamation. Thank you. Sorry, I had a brain fart for a moment. <laughs> but the Emancipation Proclamation, that did not just free us because a lot of them slave masters was like, fuck that, we just not gonna tell these slaves that they're free because if they don't know, they ain't gonna that's go nowhere. That's the whole Mason-Dixon line shit, right? Mm-hmm. So pretty much, you know, that's when the troops came and was like, yeah, niggas, y'all free. Like, hey, y'all knew, right? You, you know that, right? And actually, <laughs> slavery was still going on. Like, there, I read this book not too long ago. I forget the name about, of it, but there's this guy who was alive and actually was still... Um, pretty much living in slavery in the South. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was because they kept these people dumb and kept making them pregnant and have baby after baby and went and made them illiterate, kept them away from news and technology, and didn't let them know that they were free. So they still living on these farms and, and plantation type shit like they slaves. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is why we need to celebrate Juneteenth and other black holidays and be aware. Yeah, they, got that, they got that festival <laughs> they do here every year. Me and PJ went to it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. The one time we went, they had Maze and Frankie Beverly playing. Me and PJ got hyped. We was like, oh, shit. Oh, no. Before I let go, joy and pain, happy feelings, the reason. If I hear the songs, I oh, probably know God. it. Oh, my God. If I hear the songs, I probably know it. But man, you know, I, I bet you I play like. You know I don't know damn names. Man, if I play the first 10 seconds of the song, you don't know what it is. I'm editing out all the stuff you just said because you ain't black no more. <laughs> Says a nigga who is lighter than me. It don't matter. Oh. I know Maze and Frankie Beverly, baby. My name is fucking African for crying out loud. Yeah, I know. Disrespecting your name, not knowing Maze Frankie. <laughs> you want to hear Before I Let Go or Joy and Pain? Before I Let Go. Good, that's already why I was taping it. <laughs> uh, that's why I said that. <laughs> oh, you cheating again. Look at my stuff. Look you at... wasn't hiding it. Uh-huh. Look at it. You're not supposed to be looking, though. <sighs> Son. I bet you money. I'm going to You're going to know it immediately. Oh now, nah, get this ad out of here, man. Once we're done recording, I'm gonna go fight him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Before you, the first 10 seconds, you would know the song that is. That's amazing, Frankie Beverly. Yeah, see, I told you I don't be knowing names, damn it. You better learn them, girl. <laughs> <laughs> see, I be knowing shit, I just don't be knowing names of shit. Mm-hmm. Better get hit. That's joy and pain right there. Yeah. That's See, this shit. is the thing. is I was raised by my grandma. So I was raised with a lot of, like, Motown type, you know, older shit. And I listened to a lot of it. But I never really, like, paid attention to the names of the artists. So you can have me listen to Motown. And I ain't it. You can put, like, a Motown songs on shuffle. And I probably know the damn lyrics to songs or at least the chorus. And I'll be jamming to them. But if you ask me who the hell sang the song, I probably can't tell your ass. I never paid attention to that part. You know who sings a lady in my life? Oh no, I hope you playing with me right now. <laughs> I'm about to say, if you don't know that, you really about to get kicked out. Are you for real? Why are you putting me on a spot like no, this? No, for real, you don't know the lady in my life. Come oh on, come God. on, you about to make all your- I know it's so. I know it's someone famous. Like, no. <laughs> I wish I could see my face. She, she gonna be so mad. He's editing this out. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, no, the fuck are. I'm not, because you about to- Cause I don't people's names okay. of the songs okay hold on, is hold it, on. it's either hold gonna on. be uh hold on. where i wish pj was here it's either so gonna much. be um okay say it. i'm not going i'm gonna wait till you say whatever you about to say um what's his name i'm i'm sorry i'm drawing a blank right now 
the lady can, in my life. Just really think about it. If I hit play um, on this, you're going to be so no, pissed. No, the guy who can't see. <sighs> Ray Charles? No, the other Stevie one. Wonder? Yeah. You think it's Stevie Wonder does the lady in my life? No, it's not him. I'm about to it. play it. I'm about to play it. You're going to be so mad. After this fucking advertisement goes off. Smokey? Yeah. Smokey, yeah. It was Smokey, girl. I listen, listen, like listen. Smokey. That's your boy. It's Michael Jackson. Damn it, that's off the Thriller album. Just put in your I know this song, damn it. I would hope so. I do know that song. That's like your favorite person in the world. I'm, I so, know. I'm so shocked you didn't know that. Thriller is not one of my favorite albums. You get out. <laughs> Leave me alone. That's I his know. best record. <sighs> yeah. It's a best selling record. It's it, because it's his best record. I don't. Mm, you know which one's my favorite. I know you like or, Bad More. Thank you. A lot of people like Bad More. A lot I of people who are it. like major Michael Jackson fans like Bad More. Uh, thriller has been overplayed, and the thriller, song Thriller has. But been the overplayed. thing is, also with Bad is he crossed musical genres. There's a lot of uh, different genres added in, like he merged pop, rock, and soul in one album. Whereas Thriller, not so much. You know what I like? I like soul. That's why I like Thriller. He don't even like Motown talking about he I likes I like Motown. I just said not every song that came out of there is good. He don't like Motown as much as I there's like There's some Motown. whack Motown songs. And there's some just, whack rap songs that you be listening to. There's a to. lot of whack rap songs. I'll give you that. I'm so tired of this, man. Like, I really... Just because he's... You didn't know this is, a, no, this is the thing with him. I'm going to you about that all week, man. This is the thing with him. Is that, like, he is like a walking encyclopedia of Why, music. thank you. And shit, and so he likes to look down on other people who aren't <laughs> encyclopedias and yeah, shit. Yeah. Because, mind you, mind you, there is like, I'm not one of those people who are like concentrated knowledge in one, like, he is a concentrated knowledge in cinema and music. Thank you. And, but not in all categories, because he's not gonna know shit about country, honestly. Fuck no. Obviously, you know, but like, you know, like, give him like the 80s, you know, RB, soul, <laughs> rap, <laughs> you know, he's gonna know that shit. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm a general knowledge person, so I know a lot of basic shit about a lot of things, whereas he knows a lot of shit about concentrated things. So I can, like, tell you, like, I pretty much explain to someone what, like, the HIV preventative medicine does without even having to, like, really have studied that, but knowing how cells and the virus works mm-hmm. and shit. So get off my ass for not being you. That's right. I didn't say you got to be me. I just said get like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna make it through this podcast. He might <laughs> he might get choked out before this is over. Here's a hot take. Beat it is better than bad. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm. I'm talking about songs, not album. Well obviously Beat It is not a fucking album. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying for the people that may not know. Oh yeah. Beat It was a song that was on bad. But um Beat It was on Thriller. Was on Thriller? Yes, that's why I said that because it's on um. Thriller and Bad is on Bad. <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Just beat it. Uh-huh. I'm gonna admit something. Even though I'm a huge ass MJ fan, years after he died, I started falling off the shit. Whoa. I don't pay attention to this shit as much anymore. No. Well, what is there to pay attention to? I hate to say. No, because I used to know a whole bunch of shit. Like I used to know how much uh, the nigga weighed. I used to know his uh, height, which I think he was five eight. Oh okay. Um, I used to know. His... He was short. He's by my side. Huh? You're not short. Okay. I thought you were gonna kiss me. Now you thought. See. <laughs> See, this yeah. is why he gonna get strangled. The trickery is strong. But, like, I used to know a whole bunch about his childhood and shit. Like, I used to watch documentaries. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> uh-huh, but, I don't know. Over time, you start learning extra shit, and it's like, you gotta delete some it's shit. It's like that with hip-hop with me, too. Sometimes I used to be able to start stuff I could tell you that I probably have to really, like, re- re-up one. He knows too much. Yeah. Because, you know, when everybody was in school learning about whatever bullshit history they was learning, I was on Wikipedia and shit and reading books about hip-hop and shit and movies. That's what I cared about. Fuck trigonometry, motherfucker. I'm learning about this thugonomics and shit. Nah. I'm still trying to think if Beat It was better than Bad, though, because, I mean, huh? like, I'm trying to think about if Beat It was better than Bad, because, like honestly, I don't know, because... Bad had more. It was more cinegraphic, like uh, like talking more about the video. Time. I'm talking about the song. I ain't talking about the video. Songs. I mean, that's a better video. That guy was the snipes in it. So yeah, I was talking about the song, and I think that was directed by Martin Scorsese too. Well, because Beat It had the slash uh, solo dinner. Da, 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 da. Uh, I thought that was Dirty Diner or the other song that had. No, that was. I thought that was the Give In to Me that had the slash solo. 
He he's done a lot of guitar solos in a lot of his songs. He does a lot of guitar solos in any of his songs. A lot of his songs that cross over genres with rock, rock and pop and soul. There's a lot of guitar solos. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Let us know on Twitter if you think "Beat It" is better than "Bad" or "Bad" is better than "Beat It." Let me know. I'm curious. I might put a poll up after we record this. I'll put it right now, even. There we go. So we get back to this movie. Yeah, I say where we leave off on this movie. Uh, we were. I mean, uh, uh, bye, bye, bye. Why can't I look at the notes? <laughs> he cheating. See? Here, here. You, you, you. you got to remember where we were at, though. Um, he breaks off walls. It's somewhere around. Yeah. Here. Um. Uh. So yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh. You know, he escapes the the box. He runs into yep. the, the super deformed mutant that's in this wheelchair, wheelchair just singing the Spar Spangled Banner. Which, by the way, he runs across his uh, father-in-law who uh, had the fl- a flag, like, stamped in it, well, stabbed through his head. And he's pretty much talking to the mutant dude and was like, where's my family, where's the, ba- the baby at or whatever. And he was like, I don't know, nigga, I don't leave this fucking room. Do I look like I can walk? They're going back and forth, and pretty much the mutant starts laughing. He's like, what's so funny? And all of a sudden, the fucking mutant that looks like the Goonies comes out, and he's got the axe and shit, and he's, like, fucking shit up. It kind of reminds me of a... If you've ever seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it reminds me of, like, a Leatherface-type scenario. Because you know how, like, Leatherface mm-hmm. would be busting through shit. And yeah, this movie just, reminds me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre a lot. Um, yeah. And so they're going, they're fighting, they have their fight, which what this part was like actually interesting. Yeah, it was one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah, the, and it was the the son in law and the Goonie mutant fighting. That was like one of the best parts. Um, so they're going at it, they're stabbing each other. Uh, nigga ends up getting his fingers cut off. Not the mutant, the step, the stunt husband. Yeah, or whatever. He ends up stabbing him with the bat or whatever. And then he ends up pretty much. He like, tries to swing a baseball bat to mutant. The mutant hits it with the axe and splits it. And then he takes that split half that and spikes it into the, the mutant's stomach. Mm hmm. Because I know he stabs him in the stomach with the baseball but bat. But that didn't kill and him. And then it, he just kind of looks at him like, really, motherfucker? He takes ends up stabbing the, the flag through the dude's head. I know that. Yeah. Through the neck. Oh, he, oh no, he did something because they were like, there was almost like a little stand. Oh, yeah. He pretty much yeah. like looks like he's about to give up. He's got like this screwdriver, it looks like, in his yeah, hand or whatever. Has a screwdriver. And the dude has the axe, and the dude's laughing at him, like, nigga, what the fuck is your he's screwdriver about to do? He's on his neck and on his hair, like, you about to die, homie. Right, like, he's just trying to pick the perfect spot to like whack this nigga off at. And the nigga, like, pretty much just uh, stabs him in the foot. And the dude is like, his foot's impaled to the ground now. And he's like, holy shit. Like, that actually fucking hurt. Getting stabbed in the gut with a fucking sharp-ass baseball bat doesn't fucking hurt. But getting stabbed in the foot, okay, that hurts. Anywho, so um, then the nigga ends up impaling him. He takes the flag that was in his uh, father-in-law's head, takes that out. And he stabs it through the neck of that mutant. So that mutant is dead as fuck. He, like, leaves out. And then, but leaves the fucking wheelchair mutant alive. Wheelchair mutant is sitting there in the chair, like, with a walkie-talkie, like, yeah, kill the baby. So he's telling some other mutants running around to go kill the baby. And you think, like, nigga, this is exactly why you don't leave no one alive. Like, and then, but then you see the dog come up and he marks that nigga anyway, so... <laughs> That wheelchair mutant is dead, too. Then you see that there's this one mutant walking around with this neck brace. And he looks... I want to say he looks more fucked up than a Goonie nigga. Like, he reminds me more of Leatherface, up the neck brace. Who's that? The neck brace mutant. Oh, yeah. So, um, neck brace mutant looks like Leatherface, for real. He gets murked. Because he's, like, waiting around uh, by this car or whatever. And he's waiting for the nigga to walk up. He, like, gets him in the legs and then just, like, just hacks like the, the nigga. like the pickaxe part through his eyeball. Yep. Um, the little wheelchair mutant gets ate up by the dog, too. Uh-huh. You ever seen the movie Blade? No. Was it nice? The, the, the mutant in the wheelchair kind of reminded me of that. Because in that movie, there's like, this big, like, blob mutant that couldn't move. It just sat there. And there's, like, this big fat thing. Mm-hmm. And this when this movie, that one in the wheelchair kind of reminded me of a way smaller version. But it looked like it. Mm-hmm. And then he's running off trying to look for his kid. And uh, we see was uh, Ruby. Ruby is a mutant girl from earlier. I got no names. <laughs> I got that one. Ruby is the um, mutant girl from before who took uh, Bobby, the younger boy's jacket. Oh, see, I got no names at all. See, I, I paid attention. <laughs> I got no names. He writing down notes and don't even write down notes. I wrote he never boyfriend, gets... brother, sister, mutant. Like... He gets no names. Like... Didn't care enough. Oh, that might be a spoiler. I think he calls me Spirit because he forgets my real name sometimes. Oh, I just didn't want to put your real name out there. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to. Okay, Brent. Okay, Craig. <laughs> yeah. There's a fight coming, probably. <laughs> Do we want me to edit that out? Keep playing with me. <laughs> Keep playing with me. Uh, yeah. 
Don't let the light skin fool you. Hey, man. I got light skin too, homie. I'm just saying, don't let it fool you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He getting fucked up after this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, Halloween hustle. <laughs> Auntie who? <laughs> so, um, Ruby is in the room where they're holding the uh, baby. Mind you, Ruby is the mutant girl from before that sold the jacket. And out of all the mutants, she's like the least deformed. Yeah, that's why honestly. she's a good one, probably. Like, she's got her, like, two of her fingers are stuck together. Like, her fingers look like her hands, like, they're functional, but like, a couple of her fingers are stuck together. And, like, her face, one side is like a little, like, droopy. Yeah. But, um, other than that, she looks mostly, you know. She's got a droopy eye. Well, it's like her whole face, because it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, like a little bit kind of like Hunchback of Notre Dame sort of yeah. type thing Quasimodo, going on. Quasimodo, yeah. that, that motherfucker's name. Yeah. Um, so she pretty much, she like does a bait and switch. She like puts a piggy under the blanket, and she like takes the baby and was like, Yo, y'all not killing, killing this baby. The little rape mute was pissed. Boop, gang, I'm out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so he goes to kill the baby. It's a pig. He's pissed. He's like, Ruby. Ruby, <laughs> run. Ruby she fast runner. She all up in the hills already. Um, Track star. So then um, you go back to the RV. The um, sister I like said so you go back to Arby's. I'm like, when the fuck did they go to Arby's? I wish. <laughs> yeah, no. So you go back to the RV, and um, the brother and sister they done rigged up this contraption to like pretty much well, let them know if anyone. Thing. Yeah, to uh, to like notify them if anyone's around, come get them. They hear hear it go off, but then they go check it out. They think it's a tumbleweed, and they go back to the car. Their mom's body is gone. So someone then grabbed him a snack. They, ah, he, they said she looked like a snack. He, he <laughs> tells his sister to go back to the car. She uh, starts setting um, she starts setting up these, uh, were they propane thingies? It was, uh, they took, it was propane like. Propane tanks? Yeah. And she starts setting them up. So they're setting up this trap. He goes looking after the nigga. The nigga is eating his mom. God. This punk ass bitch has a gun with a clip and a half of bullets. Sees this nigga eating his mom's guts and runs. Mind you, this nigga don't even have a weapon. It's just a nigga eating eating his mom. And he's sitting there with the gun. You gonna run from a nigga with no weapons? <laughs> eating his mom. Hey. Like, and not even in a good way. Like, hey. And he just, like, sitting there. He runs. He's running away, shooting behind him, wasting these bullets, shooting the damn ground. But this is the nigga you give the damn gun to. I feel like the, the son-in-law would have been better off with the gun. But, mm-hmm. um... Yeah, he got no chopper until, like, the very end of the <laughs> So he gets back to the RV. They set up these matches by the door, and they set off these, the propane tanks are going off, so they're setting up something ready to explode. The mutant nigga busts through the window, grabs his sister. The brother gets him off the sister, but ties his arms together around the um, window, so he's kind of stuck there. They sneak out this side window, and so the mutant dude, he's like, he's like, breaks free of it. He comes around to the door and is like, yeah, I'm getting you, little niggas. Opens the door. The door sets off the matches, and... Boom. There goes the dynamite. Guy, he catches up to Ruby. Ruby's about to give uh, give him back his baby. But then the rapist mutant from before jumps down off this thing, jumps on the dude. They're fighting back and forth. The boyfriend pretty much shot, shoots him, kills him, you think. Then he drops the gun right next to the body without shooting him again to make sure he's dead. Although he has been shot like two, three times already, so you would assume he's dead. Yeah. But, I mean, any smart nigga would be like, I'm still not leaving a gun by you. He walks back over to Ruby. Ruby hands him the baby. And um, then you see me behind him. Rapist Mutant's getting up. He's picking up the gun. He's about to shoot. Ruby runs, uh, Don't tackles him. that shotgun by his body. That was the See, worst. what people be doing the most dumb <laughs> ever? <laughs> Nigga picks up the gun. He's about to blast him. Ruby does this whole dive and tackle like she's about to try it out for the NFL. Tackles the n- nigga off the cliff, and they are both gone. Like, dead. Blood splatter everywhere. So then, um, they, you go back to the RV, and they, they're they walking back to the RV, since because once they dipped out, they ran away a little bit, let the shit explode, they come back. The dude that they thought they killed in the explosion is still alive. Sister picks up something and just stabs it through his head and was like, nah, nigga, you dead now, for real. Yeah. He just sitting there laughing, like, exploded with something sticking out of him laughing. These mutants are weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. And so, he's dead now. You're then. Dead now. And so they're, like, hugging each other, like, oh, it's over, because they think it's just that one nigga. It's not. They bro- their uh, brother-in-law comes walking back with a dog and baby, and it's just, like, oh, happy, happy ending. Reunion. They're all together, and they murked all these niggas. They're safe now. But then it's just, like, boom. Quick zoom out. You see this. Binoculars. Binoculars. Dun, 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 dun. Sequel bait. And that is the Hills Have Eyes remake from 2006. So, Spirits, uh-huh. out of 10... 
What would you rate this movie? How'd you feel about it? Um, three. Three? Yeah. Damn, you really didn't fuck with it. No, because it's just one. I don't, I don't like Americana themes. Because I'm, it's just seeing, I mean, the one thing that I did like about the movie is that, um, not that I believe Republicans should die, <laughs> but all the Republicans in this movie died. Yeah, they did. Really badly. All the, um, Independents and, and Democrats or Libertarians, they, they're alive in the end of it. Um, but it was just like, they're, it dragged. Are you sure? Movie. I thought all of them pretty much, except for the the husband were. No, because that boy was talking about smoking pot and shit. And yeah, not, yeah. yeah. He, that's why I would say he's an independent. The sister was definitely more. Okay. Yeah. Anti who. So. It dragged in the beginning. Like, yeah, it, they just, it was too much. That's first 42 minutes, man. Too much character. And that was 42 minutes, over half an hour on just character it's development. It's 47-minute movie. 42 shit. minutes before something really pops off. I mean, they spent a good 5 to 10 minutes on one nigga who didn't even make, who we saw, like, for a good split second and then blasted his head off. <laughs> and then, like, it was just, it was a bunch Building of... Building up the suspense, girl. Too much extra shit. Too much. Like, y'all could have shortened this down. It could have been sweet. Like, we could, like there should have been more... The ending should have been more, like, throughout the movie. Like, the fighting, the suspense, the combat, the gore. Like, that should have been mm-hmm. more throughout the movie. It was just a bunch of... Because then it, it don't make sense. Like, they do a little bit of explaining in a monologue of why the mutants are eating people and shit. Because they're mad at the government for, you know, taking away their community by blowing shit up or whatnot. And making them dis- disfigured and shit. But then, mm-hmm. it's just like... there's It just didn't make no sense for real. It was just stupid. And it was, it dragged on too long. Like the ending part was the best part, and that was it. So then you get to the very end for you. Mm-mm. How about you? I get a five. Mm-hmm. It was man. It was whatever. I remember not being the biggest fan of the original one either when I saw it. I remember liking it more, and I liked this one. Like you said, this is a. Uh, this is one of the things like when you if you have like a Halloween party or something, or you like doing something around the house around Halloween, and it's like on AMC or one of them channels that play number Halloween movies all day. Just have it on in the background, not pay much attention. Just look when you see somebody get fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's how I would do. It. But other than that, like I probably won't sit down. Be like, hey, you want to watch this? Like I probably would just watch the original again. And the original one's shorter too, so gets to the point a lot quicker. What five? I don't, I don't feel. Like it. I don't want to give it no less. I don't want to give it no more. It's a five. It's whatever. It's man. Well. I it was trash. There you go. <laughs> I said it was mess. She said it was trash. And not the good trash either. Yeah, all your good trash has definitely been that way. I what I was hoping this was going to be. You know what the crazy thing is? I looked up because there's a sequel to this movie. It came out a year later. So they was like, make one soon ASAP. Because mm-hmm. it made a lot of money. And from the synopsis of it and seeing all the even worse reviews that it got than this one, I'm more interested in that one now. Because that might be more interesting. The, the tra- it might be trash trash. The good trash. I'm mad people like this shit. Like, it was just... Well, you know, that's the thing. There was, this came out with 06. I think that was around, like, the start of the period where it was just, like, horror movies was all that was in the theater. Like, you get to the point where it's nothing. But they go to movie theaters, like, Insidious and all that shit. Like, that was what people wanted to watch. Anytime, any horror movie that came out was making mad money. At least just I remember. Just a horror movie doesn't mean it's good. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. That's why I haven't watched it until now. I never really had an interest in watching it. The original I wanted to watch because it was one of Wes Craven's. I think it might be his first movie. Or early movie. That's the guy that did like Nightmare on Elm Street and shit, like that scream and shit. One thing I'm noticing is when they remake horror movies, they don't do a good job at it. Yeah, that's why a lot of them don't go very. I mean, I like some of them. I can't lie. I didn't. Right. I didn't care for this one, but I like the like the Friday Thirteenth remake. I like the Test Chance on Masking movie. I like the first remake. Not the later one. See, I like the original one better than the second one for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You like the original one better than the second one? Than the remake. Oh, than the remake. Mm-hmm. I like them both by equally for real. I like the original Carrie better than the remake Carrie. Never saw the remake. Well, there's two remakes of Carrie, though. Well, I'll take that one. Well, there was a, one of the remakes was a TV movie, or like a Stephen King miniseries. And then there was that remake that had the one chick from Kick-Ass in it that, that you're talking about, I think. Yeah. Never saw either any of them. I only saw the original Carrie. Not even the whole movie. I've never actually watched all of Carrie before. I've seen most of it. The original one's I know the better. story. I believe it. I'm sure. I think Brian De Palma did that one, so I'm sure it's better. <laughs> <laughs> stop stop messing with these 
original plastics that are like great as is because y'all keep fucking the shits up like <laughs> she's like why leave it You're alone blowing up. <laughs> it's like stop it it's good as it is like if it ain't broke don't fix it leave it alone come up with another horror movie well mm-hmm. you know it's probably the same thing like with psycho the re- when they remade that there was like kids won't watch the original because it's old and because it's in black and white so they remake it for the new generation or the new generation I get to watch the old shit but oh you know this is whack this is boring whereas we watch the new ones and be like this is whack and this is boring I feel like people who do horror remakes of cl- like great horror movies are just people with no creativity who are looking for some money mm, yeah probably some artists that they want to put their own spin on something but sometimes they spins be trash. And oh, be like, yeah. Most why? of the times they do be trash. Like, no one talked to you before this, nigga. You ain't got no friends. Because they would have, if you had friends, they would have told you, my nigga, no. No friends don't love you. <laughs> well, I'm sure there'll be plenty more remakes coming out. Leave Halloween alone. That's coming out. Well, that's not a remake. Well, remake. It's a sequel, kind of. But. Yeah. I mean, after this one. Leave just because one. I feel like, because Jamie it Lee Curtis re- is still in it. Yeah. So that's why I feel like it's not going to be that bad. Honestly, I'm excited for it because Jamie's going to be kick-ass. Like, I've always wanted her to be. Like, she was. But, like, I was so mad how they killed her off. It was the most punk-ass shit Halloween ever. Halloween Resurrection. Like, that about. shit was some bull fucking shit. Well, I told shit. you why, though. She was that like, I'm movie. done with this shit. I want to... No. If I'm in it, I'm going to die early. So, she, no, she ain't going to do it. No, that was bullshit. She fucking beheaded that nigga. It should have been well, over. Well, that was the thing I told you. I was just telling you the other day. They... they that was supposed to be the end like he cut his head off Michael Myers dead but that movie like this made so much money that it got a sequel and she ain't wanna fuck with it no more like that so they killed her off in the beginning cause she's like that's the only way I'll do it see I feel like this is just I haven't part five, I maybe. mean obviously I haven't seen the new Halloween yet I mean who has but yeah, no, <laughs> I'm like no no one has but like I feel like a good way to do the storyline is because I like the whole Jamie Lee badass route of it <clears throat> Cause if you can't tell, I like Jamie Lee, mm-hmm. but I feel like they should let her like she should get old, right? And she'd be like, "Oh, I'm getting too old to fight Michael," and she just be like, shit. and she has grandkids and shit now and whatnot. And she, but she be like, you know what? I'm gonna just end it because myself now, because he's gonna keep going after me. But she trains up her grandkids and her children and shit to be like fighting Michael, and it's just gonna be like like a trilogy of like you know Michael getting murdered by the rest of the You almost family. have that in a way. Cause Halloween four and five is supposed to be like her daughter or somebody. Yeah, but those are trash. Those ain't trash. I like those movies. Okay. Well, one more than the other one, I think. I can't remember which one now. They're not as good as Jamie fighting Michael. Well, you got the first two for that, and H H two O. Yeah. Well, H two O, I think, ignores the fucking all the sequels anyway. So. They, I don't. We had to see the Rob Zombie ones one day. The first Rob Zombie remake of Halloween, I actually liked that one a lot. This Halloween two he did is fucking horrible, like horrendous terrible not even good bad that's like a one out of ten from my memory if not a zero that shit was sucked i got it upstairs too <laughs> my favorite there's two of mine that are favorite and i can't remember if that's the same movie or yeah, you not talked about it before with the shotgun kill yeah yeah shotgun i think kill that's how i favorite. swear i think that's halloween four or five. I, I know it's four or five i don't remember which I don't one think that's five. it's probably four then Oh, I'm sure we'll watch them and find out. It might be four. And then the other one is where um you got the doctor and the little girl and... That's Halloween 4 or 5, too. Same one. Yeah, There's probably one. the same movie you talking about. Yeah. That's probably... Yeah, that one's my favorite. Mm-hmm. That was the same one. Because yeah. the girl was supposed to... She was uh, staying home with her boyfriend when passing out candy and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's Halloween 4. Yeah, that was the best one. That was when they brought Michael Myers back. Because mm-hmm. they killed him off in Halloween 2. In Halloween 3, they wanted to start doing different stories in the Halloween universe. But people were like, no, fuck that. We want Michael Myers back. Mm -hmm. So then they had to bring him back. You know, I fucking love Halloween 3. You know, everybody talks shit about it. Fuck all y'all. You know a good uh, killer movie? What's that? Jeepers Creepers. Never seen it all the way through. Neither one. That's pretty good. I need to see him one day. Maybe they'll throw him in the bag. They, they have that new one on Netflix I need to watch. Yeah, I just said third one came out last year. I know. I haven't seen it yet. I'm lacking. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll watch it for the hustle. Hey. But last week, we introduced a new segment. It's a hustle approved. Anything you fucked with recently, video game, music, movie, anything you want to hustle approve, recommend to the listeners. I got mine if you want to let me go first while you think about it. Because last, last time, PJ recommended an old PS1 game from his childhood that we remembered. And then I recommended a Gangstar album that people should go listen to. I'm going to let you go first. 
I'm going to rec hustle recommend or hustle approve Until Dawn on the PS4. It's a horror game. And you basically go around, you make decisions, your decisions can get you killed. And I'm recommending this game because Spirit has been playing it. And I've been loving watching her get the shit scared out of her repeatedly. Her and my brother, she was up to like 5 in the morning yesterday morning playing that game. Jump scares galore. Jump scares to the point where controllers are sat down and she said, I'm done for that. That breaks needed to be taken. And it's been glorious watching that shit. Her and my brother, but my brother not even playing it, but he's jumping too. It's the best. And that game is just fun. Like, I love that game. Like... If the story changes depending because you can get people killed at different points of the story so the story again with all your people survive you can get all of them killed you know you can get most of them saved most of them killed shit like that so it has replay value and everything it's only on the PS4 though so you got a PS4 to play it and it's cheap as hell now I got it when it was brand new but nowadays I think you get it for like 20 bucks so I am hustle approving until dawn on the PS4 check that shit out now what are you gonna do anything come to mind anything that's like yo people need to check this out it's funny because I was thinking about stand until You can do it too, no, I mean, sure, you can do it too. Nah. Um, they get a double recommend. They really could check that shit out. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to recommend a book series. There you go. Um, it's called Across the Universe. So, for oh. any of you sci fi lovers who like like books that have undertones about real life issues and things like that, um, it's, it's a bomb ass book like for like it makes you question a lot of things it makes you question good or bad um it makes you question government it makes you question humanity um and things like that but pretty much it's called it's called across the universe it was written by let me find that beth revis mm. um and it's it's older book it was came out like seven years ago in 2011 but yeah there's like i think it's a three book series i've read all of them i'm about to rush back on it again because that shit was the bomb mm -hmm. and i literally i really want to read this with you i feel like we should do like a our little like book thingy mm -hmm. and things together. did they make a movie of this too no oh there is a movie called across the universe it is not based on the book completely separate thing oh okay i was in the hospital once and i was bored as fuck and they had these movies sitting around and so i grabbed it because i thought it was about the book it was not i was disappointed that movie was trash there you go not, not hustle approving that movie right that's what's up tell him go read a book yeah we also got some we tapped on this earlier but we're gonna get back into it again we got black history flashcards for you more black history for that ass whether you like it or not Ooh. And I've been saving this one for you. It came up last time we did it, but I said I'll save it for you because I know you love this person. I'm going to hand you this card, flip it over, tell them all about this person. There you go. <laughs> My favorite president so far, Barack yeah. Hussein Obama. There you go. Born August 4th, 1961, and he is still alive. Because hey. we don't die, we multiply. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, mm. so he served as the 44th president of the United States from 2009 to 2017. Yep. He's the first African American to serve as president. First president born outside the contiguous United States, which means he was still born in America. He was just born in Hawaii. Mm hmm. And then in 2010, enacted the Affordable Care Act, often referred to as Obamacare, mm -hmm. designed to increase health insurance quality and affordability, reduce the cost of health care, and lower the uninsured rate by expanding insurance coverage. So I pretty much said that you cannot deny people for having pre-existing conditions because most of us come with those. Yep. And the first African-American president of the Harvard Law Review. Mm. And he negotiated and normalized U.S. relations with Cuba in 2015. And if you guys don't remember, 626 is not just the experiment number for Stitch, but it's also yeah. the date for when gay marriage became legal in the United States under President Obama. There you go. You actually met Obama or like went to see him, right? Yeah, so... Uh, I'm a little geeked by this because um, during the um, the election when he was campaigning for Hillary, he came down to Capitol University at this uh, professor who worked at Capitol. So she got free tickets, but she couldn't go because she was teaching the class. She's like, yo, if anyone wants these tickets, like my hand shot up. I was like, yes, ma'am. So I got the tickets, dipped, grabbed my mama. We went to go see Obama. And like I was crying. It was like a like 
emotional it was emotional for me because it was like all this black greatness and you know things that they said we would never be able to do we did it we's here and like i love i love him as a president not every president is perfect i know but out of all the ones we've had in my lifetime i prefer him over all the others and then also um before he left the White House, me and my family went to go um, to D.C. and we went and toured the White House before we left. And I actually got to see his dog. That thing is big as fuck. Well, I think that's about it for today then. Got movies, she got black history facts, she got stories. I think that's about enough for the people today. Start of the Halloween hustle. We'll see if PJ brings his ass around for the next episode. That's some motherfucking hustle. Because peek behind the curtain, me and PJ had all the movies for this month already picked out. And this first week was going to be some shit. And you would have loved this first week. I know. Yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> How do you feel about that? You could have watched that, but you watched The Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> PJ, <laughs> between you and Brent, I'm about to strangle both of you. Because because of you, I had to watch The Hills Have Eyes. When I could watch something that I wanted to watch instead. Mm-hmm. And you already know what that is. I'm not going to spoil it for the people because they don't know yet. But I was looking forward to that and said I had to watch this bullshit. And then you got me over here getting harassed, my blackness questioned by this nigga over here who looked like he would fucking turn beat red if he stayed out in the sun too long. Mm -hmm. It says the mixed person. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Exactly. I know I'm mixed. You can talk all your jokes all you want, but I know the truth. Okay. You're doing with half of it in you. No, I'm, I'm not half white or half black. I am fully black and fully white. There ain't gonna be no more Brent after this, huh? Ah, <laughs> podcast show to listen to after this, y'all. <laughs> she knows she loves it. I love you. I don't know if I love it. Uh huh. You backing up. I'm gonna get close to the microphone. Mm hmm. So, one more thing to let them know that they can find us on the Twitter at capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase I cast. Follow the spirit at the spirit 95 on Twitter. Follow PJ at capital P, lowercase A U L Y, capital P, lowercase J, Pauly PJ. Facebook, we are at facebook.com slash HVH podcast. Instagram, we are Home Video Hustle podcast. YouTube, type Home Video Hustle in the search bar. I can show your ass will be there. New videos every Wednesday. If you want to know what the fuck we're going to talk about on Friday, watch that video on Wednesday. Merchandise on redbubble.com. We are on the podcast network, Age of Radio, and you can find us at ageofradio.org slash Home Video Hustle. And now I'll let you know one more thing before I go. I'm Brent. And I'm the spirit. Have a good rest of your Friday. Have a good rest of your day you're listening to this song. Live your best life. Listen to some good music. Play until dawn. Read across the universe. And enjoy your shelf. Peace. Enjoy yourself. There you go. Hey everybody, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And this is Everything, Everything I, I Learned from movies. movies. And tonight, tonight, like every night, we bring <laughs> you questionable movies and pass the lessons that we've learned on to you, as well as we go over some great beer and funny third thing. Yes, we're excellent beer reviewers, and as BJCP certified beer judges, we sort of know what we're talking about in regards to that. The movies? <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to hear us talk about uh, odd movies and uh, is he talking about BJing, Woo! Uh, listen to us at eilfm.podbean.com. That's everything I learned from movies.podbean.com. Hey, honey, are you ready to pop that top? <sniffs> Woo! My top!